This chaotic painting by Eugène Delacroix is called The Death of Sardanapalus and was painted in 1827. It shows the story of the downfall of King Sardanapalus of Assyria who lived in the 7th century BC. We can see him on the top left, dressed in white, laying on his bed which is covered with bright red sheets. His bed stands on top of a large pyre. You can see some wood blocks making up the pyre behind the black slave in the left foreground and on the bottom right. Sardanapalus seems unconcerned by the chaotic scene surrounding him. What is happening is that his palace is being surrounded by rebellion forces and he has decided that not anyone or anything that gave him pleasure during his life should survive him. The painting you have seen so far is part of the collection of the Louvre Museum. It's an enormous work measuring about 4 by 5 meters, which is about 13 by 16 feet. There is also another version of this painting, which is part of the collection of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which measures 74 by 82 centimeters and is about 32 times smaller than the original. He painted this replica 14 years after the original. Before going into the different elements of this masterpiece in more detail, it is helpful to know a little bit more about the mysterious Sardanapalus. He was the last king of Assyria, which was a very large empire in the Middle East between the 25th and 7th century BC. He was an interesting character to say the least. He lived an extremely luxurious life and was very lazy. According to Sardanapalus, the main purpose of life was physical desire. And he followed his own advice, dressed in woman's clothes, wore makeup and was surrounded by many male and female mistresses. As many people got annoyed by his lifestyle, a group of rebellions formed to defeat Sardanapalus and his troops. Sardanapalus went down in a typical fashion. At some point during the war with the rebellions, he thought that he had defeated the rebellions and started the big party. However, the rebellions came with reinforcements and defeated Sardanapalus, leading to the end of the Assyrian Empire. But before they could put his hands on him, Sardanapalus burned himself together with many of his eunuchs, mistresses and royal possessions and that is what this painting is showing in an explicit way. So we have Sardanapalus here, laying on his bed which stands on top of a pyre. And on the front corners of his bed we can recognize two elephant heads, illustrative of his extravagance. He has just ordered his eunuchs and palace officers to cut the throats of his mistresses. And notice that he has ordered his mistresses to wear expensive jewelry as he wanted his royal possessions to be burned with them on the pyre. On the bottom right is also a collection of crowns and jewelry that are about to go down. Let's start with some details on the right side of the painting. We can see a woman leaning back onto the bed to escape from the soldier in front of her who is about to grab his sword to kill her. To the right of the soldier you can see the smoke and flames that are burning down the capital of Sardanapalus empire. To the left of the soldier another mistress hangs herself to prevent getting killed by others. In the right foreground a mistress of Sardanapalus is killed by a eunuch who stabs her with a knife in the throat. To their right are two men, one resigns to his fate, his hands on his head while the other seems to back Sardanapalus to stop the madness. Moving to the left side of the painting, we see on the bottom a decorated white horse about to be beheaded by a slave. Above the slave, a half-nude woman lays lifeless on the bed of the king. She was his favorite mistress Myra. To her left is another woman whose face is covered by a green sheet and to her left, a man tries to remove a spear from his chest. Above him are two women who are still able to escape the slaughtering. One of them has prepared a decanter, cup and towel for the king in case he wants any of that. In the remainder of this video I would like to tell you about Delacroix's inspiration for this painting and how this work was received when it first went on display. And as a little teaser, after seeing this work in 1828 
One viewer threatened to cut off Delacroix's hands such that he could never paint again. And I would love to hear in the comments below what you think of this painting and if you have any element that you find most fascinating. But let's first look at Delacroix's inspiration, which came primarily from a play written by the English poet Lord Byron, who in turn was inspired by older texts on the story of Sardanapalus. In 1821, Lord Byron wrote a play called Sardanapalus, a tragedy, which describes the crazy story of the death of Sardanapalus. In preparation for this painting, Delacroix also consulted some older writings on the death of Sardanapalus. He combined all these sources to create a unique story on the death of Sardanapalus. We can still identify some figures in this painting based on Lord Byron's play. For example, the man on the left, removing a spear from his chest, is Salimenes, the brother-in-law of Sardanapalus. He just came back from the battlefield and will die after he removes the spear. And the woman lying on the bed is Myra, the favorite lover of Sardanapalus. According to Lord Byron's story, she was the only one with Sardanapalus on top of the pyre. One question that may have been on your mind throughout this video is whether there is any truth to this story of Sardanapalus. The truth is that there is little historical evidence to support the full story, and the story as depicted here has probably been a combination of some historical facts and quite a bit of imagination. The last thing I want to explain is how the painting was first received when exhibited at the Paris Salon of 1828. It is good to know that this work was not commissioned by anyone and that it was the largest uncommissioned work by Delacroix. He had high hopes of this work and created many sketches that are still available for this painting. Here you can see two examples of such sketches. But when the finished work went finally on display, it received a lot of negative reviews. People and critics complained about the messy composition and incoherent use of colors. Whereas the French state bought earlier paintings of Delacroix, they did not buy this one. Instead, Delacroix took it back to his studio, where it stayed until 1845. He only sold the painting after he made the smaller replica, which is now in Philadelphia. The larger painting was not on public display until 1921, when the Louvre bought it. Nowadays, this painting is highly appreciated. Looking back, it is one of the early Romantic paintings, whereas many people in the early 19th century were still used to the clarity of the neoclassical paintings by Anger and his colleagues, the romantic paintings focused on showing emotions in a more chaotic setting, of which this work is a prime example. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you have not done so, and leave a comment down below. I always love reading your feedback and thoughts. Thank you for watching.